the Arkansas Future Mobility Council just released their report of recommendations. And one thing they recommended was that Arkansas spend about a million dollars, almost a million dollars, to study the feasibility of building a spaceport in Arkansas. Now, I'd like to save the state almost a million dollars tonight. Don't fund the study. It's a terrible idea. It's really kind of a dumb idea. It Scientifically, it won't work. Looking at the history, it won't work. And I'm, I'm going to show you. Just listen to this video. You don't have to pay me a million dollars. You don't have to pay me a hundred thousand dollars. Just listen to the video and know, and you will know that this is a bad idea. That's not the only bad idea in that report. There were several there, and I could do a breakdown of the whole report, but I won't take the time tonight. It looked a lot like crony capitalism to me, and I, I, or just downright socialism. I didn't know that the Arkansas legislature was so socialistic, but it appears that uh, for the right people, they are, and, and the Arkansas Future Mobility Council has got a lot of execs from the big corporations in this state, along with some academics and along with a few entrepreneurs. One thing they didn't have was scientists. And I don't, I'm really not a scientist either. I taught middle school science for 12 years in public school. So yeah, I do have a science background. I have enough of a science background to know this thing won't work. Uh, but before I explain why it won't work scientifically, let's take a look at where we are historically. Now, this is an article from Wired Magazine from September of 2018. And what the article is about is how all these locations in all these states have decided to rush off and build these spaceports because it sounds so hip and techy and futuristic and modernist. And so let's go spend a bunch of money and build spaceports. And they build them, and really the capacity is not there. They're building more spaceports than they have a need for. There's just no need there to launch anything to space or to recover anything from space. And I, as I'm going to show you, most of these things are in the wrong place for that anyway, and Arkansas would be in the wrong place for that anyway. But, but I, I guess my thing is, why hire people, why spend a million dollars doing this feasibility study when you can just look at your neighbors, look at Oklahoma, look at Colorado, look at these places that even have an aerospace background, is it working for them? No, it's not. They've got big, mostly empty, shiny, underutilized facilities. If they're, if they're utilized, it's generally not for as a spaceport. It's that some other guys have some other company and they know that uh, the, the state is embarrassed to have this big empty spaceport there and so they rent it out to them to do something else for a song. So, is it working for our neighbors? No, it isn't. Is there an oversupply of spaceports? Yes, there is. Should we build a spaceport? No, no. Uh, I, uh, first, I want to explain the science of generally what's wrong, and then I'm going to show you where our spaceports are as far as the government spaceports we have now and see if there's a reason for them and help you understand why it's just a terrible idea. You don't need to do the study. You're welcome, Arkansas. I want to save you a, a million bucks if you listen to me. I have, I have here a globe. The Earth, the Earth spins uh, counterclockwise, like so. All right? So the Earth turns really rapidly. It feels like we're sitting still, but along the equator, you're moving at about 1,650 kilometers an hour. That's pretty fast. And you don't feel that way. You don't feel it because the Earth's moving along with you. Now that's at the equator. So if you imagine the equator spinning and something jumps off the equator, if it jumps to the east, it gets a little boost because of the Earth's speed. It's like the Earth is spinning, spinning, and it can throw something off that way. Now if you're further up, that's a smaller circle. So when the Earth spins, it doesn't cover as much distance in the same amount of time. In other words, it's going slower than 1,650 kilometers per hour. So you don't get as big a boost jumping east right there. But what this means is with, with space launches and rockets, 
you know, even a little bit counts. If you can save a little bit of energy, it counts a lot. And I'm, I'm going to show that you that in the next section. But the bottom line is this. Most orbits are east to west orbits. They go from the east to the west. And then different levels of orbit, geostationary is, you know, way out here. Uh, but you, you have an advantage launching from the equator for the most common kind of orbit that's done. And that's why most countries have their launch facilities as close to the equator as possible. At least if you're talking about the east-west orbits that are most popular. Now let's go to this next section and I'll show you what I mean. When America built its, started its space program, it built its launch center, Johnson Space Center, in Houston, Texas. Because at the time, that was the closest spot in America to the equator where we had good infrastructure. South Florida at that time was basically a swamp. The engineers didn't want to go there. We didn't have the universities there. It was hard to get materials down there and to build all the concrete launch pad and what have you. But we still, we built Johnson Space Center close to the equator as we could. Houston, Texas. Houston, we have a problem. They did have a problem. The problem was that Houston, Texas was not close enough to the equator. It wasn't, it was okay, but we could do better if we could launch from closer to the equator. And so they built the Kennedy Space Center and that was in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And that is now our primary, they, they still launch from Houston, some, but that's mostly training and museum and other things. The primary launch center for east-west orbital flights is Cape Canaveral, Florida. And that's because Cape Canaveral is further south and closer to the equator than Houston, Texas. And it gives you not even a 1% advantage as far as fuel savings. How much fuel do you need to take to get something to orbit? Well, you, you get more of a boost closer to the equator. So Cape Canaveral is a little bit better than Houston, Texas. And that difference was enough for them to not have Houston as their primary launch center anymore for east-west flights. They had it for uh, some other flights, but they, they went ahead and built in the swamp to get that advantage and decided it was worth it. That's just how much it matters. In addition, you want to build in a place where if your rocket doesn't do well, let's say it crashes, you crash into the ocean and not into a neighboring state because that, that's considered unfriendly. And so in Houston, when they launched the rocket east, it's true it had to skip over Florida, but you had the Gulf of Mexico, then you, if you could get past Florida, you had the Atlantic Ocean. Because as I showed you with the Earth turning, you wanted to launch those rockets as close to the equator as you, you can, going to the east. That gives you, the spinning Earth gives you a natural kickstart when you do it that way. So Houston was okay at that with, with that, but Cape Canaveral was better. And so they built a new launch center at Cape Canaveral. Now, to show you how important this is, geostationary orbits are particularly hard because you, you not only the, is the kick from the Earth important, but you need to get around the Earth's equator anyway at a distance that's way out in space. And so you need more fuel to correct your course, even from Cape Canaveral, than you would be if you were actually along the equator. And so guess what America did? We went out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, found an atoll, a coral ring out in the Marshall Islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but it was equatorial. And we built the Reagan Space Center where we launch our geostationary flights. We, built, we hauled everything all the way out to the middle of the Pacific Ocean just to get the right azimuth, just to get the right launch spot. That's how important geography matters in rocket launches. And my friends, Arkansas is not a good spot. We're not a good spot because we're not close to the equator, because we don't have a big ocean to the east of us, and because, well, what do they say about the weather in Arkansas? If you don't like it, just hang on. It'll change. That's no good for launching rockets. You, you need predictability in the weather, and you need a lot of good weather. So we're... On no account is Arkansas any good at this. And now you may say, well, Mark, there are a couple of other 
uh, launch centers that are not located way to the south. That's true. Vandenberg Air Force Base is used as a launch center, but that is mostly for north-south orbits. Occasionally, like not all of our flights or satellites need to be east-west. Some of them can go in north-south orbit. And so Vandenberg Air Force Base is all right for that. And it's about because then the, the equatorial thing doesn't matter. You know, if you're you're trying to get a north-south orbit, getting a hurdle to the east fast, that doesn't matter. But they still have a nice big ocean nearby. It's not to the east necessarily, but again, it doesn't matter because you're not going east-west orbit, you're going in north-south orbit. And I guess Kodiak, Alaska, is if they do a polar orbit, they want that satellite to stay up there and, and orbit a pole. And they have a site in Kodiak, Alaska, because again, it's way to the north, they've got water in front of them, and geographically, it makes sense. And the only other place I think they launch from is the Goddard Space Flight Center in Wallop Island in Virginia. And that is not even rockets that go into space. That They launch suborbital rockets. If they want to study the upper layers of the atmosphere, they'll launch a rocket there knowing that it will fall harmlessly into the Atlantic Ocean. So just look at the geography. Just look at the science. Arkansas has none of the things necessary to be a good spaceport. You do not need to spend a million dollars to know this. You just need to use some common sense, look at the history, look at what your neighbors, what happened to them when they try it, and, and look at the science. That's all you got to do. Now, I will say this, Arkansas has some advantages. Why don't we study how we can take advantage of those? So, a spaceport there are other states that have a natural, natural geographic advantage over us when it comes to spaceports. We should let them do the spaceports. But we have some advantages too that we could pursue. We're centrally located in the United States. We have a good transportation infrastructure. And we have the Arkansas River that flows right into the Mississippi, very convenient for shipping goods and goes into Oklahoma a long way into Kansas. I, I followed it along. And if the feds would ever get out of the way and let us develop that, we could do a great deal of shipping up and down the Arkansas River. We could do a lot more than we could. We, we, we have to dredge it out in spots. There's things that could be done to make it better. The infrastructure would have to spring up to support it, but you have a natural advantage. You can take it you can say, this is what we're good at. This is where we're better than California. We're better than Texas. We're better than Florida. We're better than Virginia. We tie in to the biggest river in America. We just need a way to get our goods from Oklahoma City and beyond all the way down the line into the Mississippi and to the world, to the world. So is it is it new high tech? Is it sexy? Is it you know, adventurous? No, it's shipping. It's shipping. But we have a natural advantage we're not using. Why don't we study that? Now, you don't have to give me a million dollars. I saved you a million dollars. I, I don't want any money. I, I would appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this channel and, and like and share the video. If you could do that instead of a million dollars, we'll call it even. Thank you.